Hey there heroes, Revenant Hero here, back with another epic Minecraft 1.18.2 video. Today we're diving into the dark and twisted world of Moon Knight, freshly added to Legends mod. That's right folks, Moon Knight is back since Super Heroes Unlimited 4.0 and he's crazier than ever. But before we get into the madness, a quick shout out to Tyler's Patreon where you can check out the latest update featuring Batman, Robin, Joker, Homelander, and our main man, Moon Knight. And hey, while you're at it, swing by my Patreon for the Power Rangers and Anime Pack for Legends. Trust me, you don't want to miss it. Alright guys, let's jump into crafting Moon Knight. First crack open the Book of Legends. For Moon Knight's comic suit, you'll need 12 gray fabric, 4 gray stained leather, 2 ivory wristbands, 1 lunar ethereum, 1 sacred ink, 8 silver ingots, and 16 white fabric. Sounds easy, right? Well, let's see. To get lunar ethereum, find lunar ore while mining and extract lunar crystal from it. Alright guys, so all you gotta do is combine the Lunar Crystal with the Ethereum and you guys get yourself a Lunar Ethereum. The Ethereum itself is also a mining find, so yeah, that about sums that up. Alright, let's go over Crescent Darts real quick. So what you're gonna need to craft a Crescent Dart is you're gonna need two, three Lunar Crystal like so and you'll get yourself one Crescent Dart. But if you want an Explosive Crescent Dart, all you gotta do is place a good old TNT in there. Now for the Ivory Wristbands in Sacred Anks. You need an Archaeologist Villager, Legends Mod style. Not to be confused with Minecraft's later version. To create this wise old chap, place a bone block in front of a Villager. Level him up to Master for the Ivory Wristbands. Though, be prepared to trade like it's Black Friday. All you're going to need is 9 ivory and 6 gold to get yourself the ivory wristband. Remember, you're going to need 2 of these for Moon Knight. Now, another thing you'll probably notice is that there is a Scarab Tracker. We're going to get into this in a second, but to craft the Scarab Tracker, you're going to need 16 ivory and 1 compass. Let's go over this amazing, fantastic phenomenon. Alright, Scarab Tracker time. Head to the desert at night, make sure you're almost dead, so 10 hearts or less, and right click the Scarab Tracker to summon Conchu. He's got a speech ready folks, so listen up. Human, you stand before Conchu, god of the moon and protector of the night. I have observed your actions, your courage, and your potential. In the shadows where others fear to thread, you have shown bravery, but now I have a mission for you. One that will test your resolve and spirit. Will you accept the mantle of Moon Knight, my champion in the fist of Conchu? You will become the vessel, striking fear into the hearts of those who prey upon the innocent under the cover of the darkness. You will be my eyes, my hands, my wrath. As my Moon Knight, you will carry out justice, and in return, you will be granted power beyond mortal understanding. But this path is not for the faint of heart. Darkness and danger will be your constant companions. So I ask you, brave one, will you accept this mission to become my Moon Knight? You know the drill. Say yes to his quest, get the sacred amp, and craft that Moon Knight suit. Pretty easy peasy. Thanks, Kanchu. Video is not sponsored by Kanchu in any shape or form. <laughs> Moon Knight's got three suits. Comics, David Finch, and all new, all different. They all look slick, so uh, try not to drool for me. Moon Knight is a beast with 425 health, 150 mana, 100 stamina, strength 3, speed 2, acrobatics 4, fortitude 2, mental defense 4, fire resistance 1, lightning resistance 1, piercing resistance 2, self sustenance 1, Gliding one. But let's not forget his unique passives that make him a true force of the night. 
First, we got Insanity's Retribution. When an enemy attempts to invade your mind or use mental attacks, they are damaged by the chaotic and fortified state of your psyche, influenced by Kanchu and multiple personalities. Next up, Moon Empowerment 1. The moon empowers you. At night time, your strength, speed, regeneration, fortitude, and acrobatics increase by 1. But when it's a full moon, those stats increase by plus 2 instead. Last up, we got Conchu's Avatar. Harness the power of Conchu to escape death with a 10% chance of being resurrected, regaining 75 hit points of health has a 5 minute cooldown after resurrection, though at night time this chance increases to 25% and at a full moon this chance soars to 50%. Now something else I should probably mention is that in the future there will be something akin to holy water creation similar to what is shown on screen right now but it is not in yet because it would really have no purpose so we're probably going to remove this line in the official release. Don't be surprised, but it might return in the future. These passives make Moon Knight not just a survivor, but a true predator of the night. He's got boosts, resurrections, and a mental defense that punishes attackers. So if you're playing as Moon Knight, embrace the chaos and dominate your enemies, especially when the moon is high. Alright guys, moving on to the first ability, Lunar Arsenal. This bad boy lets you switch between 7 different gadgets. No stamina or mana required, here's the lineup. First off we got the Crescent Dart, throw a Crescent Blade dealing 15 damage. Next up we have the Explosive Crescent Dart, explodes on impact or after a second on the ground, perfect for making a statement. Next up we have the Scarab Dart, which has a 50% chance to apply the Mark of Kanchu making the target take 15% more damage and has that sound effect you guys just heard. That one right there. <laughs> Next up we got the Ivory Boomerang. Deals 10 damage on impact and 10 damage when it comes back. Two for one deal. If it, if it comes back. Okay. Can you stop moving sir? Thank you. Appreciate it. Next up we have is the Throwing Iron. We'll deal 10 damage and do additional to the Supernatural and will also confuse the target. Next up is the Blow Dart. Slows, blinds, and confuses the opponent. Talk about a uh, triple threat. Next gadget we have is the Flashbang. Blinds everyone in a 10 block radius. Just imagine the chaos. Ability 2 is Lunar Strike. Harness the mystical energy of the night for a powerful combo move. What? Yeah! <laughs> we uh, do spawn more people and we can do a swift knee kick followed by a forceful left leg strike. Deals 20 damage and costs 30 mana. At night, this move will actually deal 23 damage and at a full moon, it will deal 25 damage. So yeah, this, this is a really cool one, this little, <laughs> this little animation of it. The swappable for Lunar Strike is Lunar Whirlwind. Executes a rapid spinning attack, hitting all enemies in a 360 degree radius. The damage increases with the moon phase, peaking during a full moon and uh, perfect for crowd control. Ability 3 is going to be Vengeance Burst, inspired by Marvel Ultimate Alliance 3. Leap backwards and throw a burst of Moon Blades, damage scales with the Moon Cycle. It will indeed cost 40 mana. The swappable for Vengeance Burst is Crescent Kick. Leap into the air and kick everyone in your path. More damage depending on the Moon Cycle, it's all about those Lunar Vibes if you know what I mean. Before we move on to ability 4, I do want to go over the utility ability, which is Equip Weapons. Equip both your Truncheon and Ang for versatile combat options. Uh, your Truncheon has a quicker attack speed, and if you shift plus right click, it will actually throw it and deal 10 damage. Keep in mind it does have a cooldown, and if I were not in creative, it would take it from my inventory. 
Next up, we got the Inf. Right click to activate your Divine Shield. Shift plus right click to reveal entities in a 15 block radius. Heals you for 15 hearts when below 25% max health. Warns of nearby enemies by glowing and enhances your vision in the darkness. Next up, we got Truncheon Modes the Swappable for equipped weapons. Switch between different truncheon forms. First up, we got the Staff, which increases your attack range by one and has plus one damage per hit. Next up, we got the Truncheon Nunchucks, which increases your attack width by three. That being said, you don't actually have to hit anybody directly. You just have to hit them in a three block radius. Next up, we have the Truncheon Taser, which causes shock damage. Has a chance to slow them down, basically, so that's uh, pretty darn nifty. Next up, we have the Truncheon Grapple, which, if you just place down these guys, if you do that and then left click, you can actually pull them towards you, which is pretty, pretty dang nifty. <laughs> you do that, and then, so you right click to, to shoot it out, and then left click to pull him in. Obviously, if you do this up here, it'll also pull you as well. Though I'm pretty positive that if there is a Superman, for example, and he wants to fly away with you, he can go, and then if you want to pull him instead, you just left click. So that's a pretty cool thing about the, the truncheon modes. Each mode has a unique feature to keep your enemies guessing, if you know what I mean. Next up, we have ability for the Silver Cestus. Equip your Silver Cestus for some brutal melee action. If I actually spawn in some piglin brutes, you'll see that they will inflict bleeding damage per attack, which is pretty darn cool. There's also a little particle effect that will show for players and potentially some other mobs. These guys are a little weirdos. Something else you'll notice as well, if you guys are wondering, they will also drop ivory, the piglin brutes, the piglins, and something else piglin, if I'm not mistaken. <laughs> zombie, zombie piglins, I think. And now the swappable for the silver cestus is truncheon onslaught uses one of the falling truncheons for a devastating attack and that's kind of why I showcased the utility ability first. So if you use the truncheon onslaught ability, uh, basically you do a wombo combo with the truncheon you are holding. For example, the dual truncheon will do a rapid combo attack, has a three block radius and will do 15, 15 and 15 damage. So it's nothing to snooze at. If we swap our uh, tr dual truncheons to the truncheon staff, it'll like, only do 15 damage, but it'll do a sweeping attack with a chance to prone the target slash trip them. So yeah, it also has the increased uh, range of the staff. So yeah, it, it won't do the prone animation against the piglins, but it will do it against the players. Next up, we got the Nunchucks, which will basically do a flurry attack, hitting multiple enemies quickly. This will do basically the same thing as Dual Truncheon, except, you know, your own style if you want to do it with the Nunchucks instead. Next up, we have the Taser, which does a small little shockwave that attacks and stuns uh, targets in the radius, in a 3 block radius. It's not that big, but... It's, uh, it gets the job done. It actually slows them down and everything, so it's actually pretty useful if you ask me. The grapple does not have anything, though. Alright, guys. Next ability we have is Random BS Go. Now, this is one of my favorite abilities. This is so, like, memes, if you know Moon Knight and all that. Basically, you'll throw a, a barrage of random gadgets. Maximum will be 30 damage, uh, potentially 40 if you get a boomerang hit could also do less like oh, a flashbang doesn't do damage it's all about the chaos really so yeah i hope you guys enjoy that ability it's really fun all right guys let's go over moon knight's soundboard seven voice lines that add some flair consider yourself lucky i took my meds today this night will be your last sorry the fist of Kanshu doesn't pull punches next time I won't be so kind. Perhaps your god will show mercy. Mine won't. I wear white so they'll know I'm coming for them. No more chatter. I've got enough voices in my head. Now guys, for his ultimate ability, Spatial, 
disintegration. Pray to the moon god Kanchu and use his spatial manipulation to disintegrate anything near. Has a radius of 25 blocks and deals 70 damage during the day, 80 at night, and 90 during a full moon. Yeah, guys, that's a pretty, pretty cool ability. There's also the armor ability, guys, which will just take off your helmet. And if you have skin mode on or off, you see your skin or you see the character skin. Another cool thing to note with Moon Knight is that you'll notice at the top right, it shows what moon phase it is. Right now it is nighttime, not a full moon. So it is half, you know, bright, half not so bright. But for example, at a full moon, it will turn into a full bright icon of the moon, which is pretty dope. And at daytime, it will be pretty dark in a second. You just gotta let it take its time. There it is. So yeah, that's a cool little feature as well at the top right. All right, guys, that's it for today's video. I hope you guys enjoyed this deep dive into Moon Knight's madness. Let me know in the comments which superhero from this update is your favorite. I'll be back soon with more videos on the new character, so stay tuned. And yes, more ults for Joker, Robin, and Moon Knight are coming. Shout out to the Judge for the awesome Conchu Quest mechanic and the flashbang. Don't forget to like, subscribe, and hit that bell icon for more epic content. See you later, and uh, may Conchu spare your life. Peace out.